How are you guys? Happy Sunday. So, um, don't worry about all this. I just wake up sparkly every day. Not really. Um, we went out for a girls' night last night, and I think I'm hungover on sugar-free Red Bulls. <laughs> I could not go to sleep last night. I kept going back to sleep today. But I have a reading today, and so I figured this would be a good time to show you guys what that process looks like. So, when I'm going to do a reading, what I do is you can tell um, I'm really low to the ground right now. So, what I do is I make sure that um, I have my bare feet on the ground. Usually, I do this in my reading room, but um, I'm scared to walk in there right now because I think Sadie had stuff all over. But anyway, so what I do is if you've seen my other video or if you want to see that, let me know. I have a whole video on how to ground yourself to where you can kind of tap in and start to receive message for yourself or for others. I would recommend trying to get messages for yourself first and really um, practice with that and trust that you're receiving messages because a lot of people will not trust what they're hearing, feeling, and knowing. Um, seeing, it's it's a lot at first, but um, once you understand what those mean for you or how you get your um, messages, it's much easier. So what I do is I start to ground, and then from there, you'll notice I keep for um, every time I read someone, I have a page for them. And how I read is I just go off of a name, so I can do it remotely. I, I've read for several people that I don't even know what they look like. Um, I just go off of the name. If somebody refers me, I ask, please don't tell me anything about this person. I don't want it to seem like I'm cheating. Because um, sometimes somebody will come right off the bat and say, oh, so-and-so is going to call you. They lost their mother. I'm like, ah, don't tell me. <laughs> like, do not tell me anything. Let me make sure that I'm picking up, you know, on my own and that I'm not guided in any kind of way. I feel like that's cheating. So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm reading for um, a lady that I actually look up to. Um, her memes are amazing. They're super motivating, spiritual, things like that. So I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but, um, what I'll do is I'll actually write down all the messages that come through, um, when I do my, um, meditating, tapping in, zoning in, uh, things will come to me in names. I don't get names a lot. I'll get a first initial and then, um, I'll get a lot of symbols, which I found doing probably over 50 to 60 readings now that one symbol can mean kind of a general thing. And that's where I know to start talking about that. Um, for instance, if I see like an old red wagon, that puts me in a time frame of like maybe the 50s, like old school, you know, when they used to have those red wagons um, around that era. Sometimes I'll see things in black and white. Um, I'll see, I guess, images, but then also I will feel things. Like I won't be able to breathe. Like I'll, I can't feel things. Um, I'll feel like pain in my neck. All of a sudden my head will hurt. A lot of the times um, when they want me to feel they'll all start crying and those aren't my tears because I'm reading for someone that I've never seen or met. So I'm given those emotions to, um, translate to the person I'm reading for. So a lot of the times I'm just <laughs> bawling, whether that's good tears, uh, sad tears. Um, a lot of the way that I know my confirmation is of course, a lot of people will get our goosebumps on our arms, but for some reason, my hot spot is my thighs. So when my thighs light up with, uh, goosebumps or chills, um, that's the energy letting me know that yes, you're on it. You're on it. Like, yes. And so I'm just like, cause people will talk and all of a sudden my thighs will light up and I'm like, yep, that's it. So, um, what I do is I go in and I write everything. What's going to happen is I will call her at one o'clock today and I just kind of, how you doing? Um, I don't let them talk too much. I don't want them to give me any kind of information. So I pretty much would tell her, 
Um, I went off of your first name, of course. This is all the things that came in around your energy field. What that means is we have what I like to call the easiest way a tribe of people that have passed over. And I see things as bleachers. Like your mother's side is on the left side. Your father's side is on the right. So you'll see that when I'm reading in person, I close my eyes a lot and I point and I do a lot of this stuff because these are where the energies are coming in from. And that guides me to talk about either the mother the father and almost on the second bleacher would be like grandparents and sometimes it's a little gray on the other side so that could be like um, I don't know a brother-in-law of the you know father stuff like that so it starts really branching out so um, that's how I will explain it to people and then from there I'll go down the list I'm not necessarily looking for confirmation at that time um, I just kind of let them know look without you telling me anything this is everything that came through um, I might here and there say, is this making sense to you so that I'm making sure that I'm reading for the right person? Because sometimes, believe it or not, some energies are super strong and they want to come in and they want to talk about somebody else that has nothing to do with this person. And I have to pretty much say like, hold on, like, you know, and tap in just here. And it's funny because even during a reading, there might be somebody that she's really wanting to talk to, but somebody else feels like it's much more important to come in on her time and talk to her. So whereas she may be looking for her mother to come through or something, maybe it's her grandmother that is feeling the strongest to come through and speak first. So um, I... I rarely get people that don't have the energies that they want come in, but sometimes at the end, if they didn't get the person that they wanted to talk to after I've went through everything and we've taken the puzzle pieces is which what I'm getting, and then with the person I'm reading for, we put those together. So once everything, you know, she confirms that this reading is for her and what makes sense, what doesn't, if there's something that doesn't make sense, I circle it and I ask them just, you know, we'll kind of pin this for a minute because when you're getting a reading, you're getting so much information. Most of the time it's very um, emotional. If it's in person, I ask that people record it. That way they can go back and listen to it several times um, because it's like they'll get that information later and those connections will be made. And they're like, oh, that's who that was. Or this, you know, I talked to my mother and that's that was so-and-so. And so I tell them don't get discouraged if, you know, it doesn't make sense right off the bat. So... After that, then towards the end of the reading, after we've went through everything, we've talked about stuff, um, then I open it up for questions. Um, I can directly ask, you know, if someone hasn't come in, you know, does this person have anything to say? Um, energies are weird. Sometimes, you know, they're just, I mean, kick that door open and want to talk and take over the whole reading because their energies are so strong and that was their personality. But sometimes we have quieter people that kind of maybe wasn't into this um, and you know this life but you know they still want to make their presence so it's pretty cool um, how the reading goes it an hour sounds long but that's the only reason I recommend is an hour is because 30 minutes just flies by it's not really enough time to get questions in to really go over things and you'll notice that I talk fast even talking about my reading because I'm trying to make sure that you get as much information as you can within that hour. I do not talk about my personal experiences. I have had readings where I'm on the clock and I'm paying, but she's telling me about her experiences. And I don't mean to be rude, but I'm not gonna pay to hear about something I don't connect with that happened to you. Like, this is about me. <laughs> so I want your reading to be about you. Um, after that, usually I always have them um, text me uh, the next day after they go to sleep, if they have any kind of dreams, things like that, we can interpret those together the next day. Um, sometimes there's questions that come up. Of course, I'll answer those without charging. Um, I love referrals. Um, that's the best way I like to get um, business on this is because um, I don't like to put it out there so much because there's a lot of judgment. People may think that it's dark, that it um, goes against God, things like that. I don't work that way. I believe in God. I believe in love, um, energy, spirits. I don't believe that people um, die and just get buried and they're gone. That's just my personal belief. So again, you don't see me talking about politics or religion. I will not do it publicly. So word of mouth is best. And so, um, you know, and then I ask, of course, for people to put reviews so that if you were to go look at my page, you can actually see what these people experienced when they had a reading with me. 
So anyway, um, I do these usually early in the morning. I need a few days notice. During the week is just rough because I'm in work mode and um, weekends are my best time earlier in the morning before I drink my pre-workout, before I work out, things like that because I want to make sure that I'm as uh, open-minded without anything clouding uh, the connection uh, to read. So that's what I'm doing right now. I woke up super late. I have a reading at one, so I don't get to work out until I do my meditating first. So if you have any questions on this, if you feel like you have gifts and you want to know like how I started becoming confident enough to do readings on my own, because that was really hard for me to trust that the information that I was getting was true. So message me. Uh, I would love to help or answer any questions. Um, it's just something that I really found to help me heal when my mom passed because I was such a train wreck and drinking heavily and I mean spiraling out of control. And when I got a reading done and knew that I could still communicate with my mother, um, I was I was just addicted. You know, it's just I wanted to talk to her one more time, one more time. So I would go to classes and I had this amazing lady, Ingrid, and um I need to probably give her information as well, but she was the one that taught classes out in Sugarland on how to ground yourself. And when we would meet, there's something about having a group full of people like like-minded and strong energy that, I mean, I would just instantly start, tears would roll down my eyes when we would start our, um, our practice. And so it just started getting better. And I couldn't deny the fact that when I did this tool that she taught me that I was tapping into it, something bigger than myself. And at one point I felt like that movie Ghost because I was getting a massage and poor Miss Audrey, <laughs> uh, she would lay there and she would be rubbing me. And for some reason, I don't know if her energy and mine, she was just doing something to me that I kept hearing this name and it was in my right ear. I'll never forget it. And it wouldn't stop. And he kept just saying this name and I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm laying there trying to get a massage. So I had to tell her like, Miss Audrey, did you tell me last time something about your, you know, uh, a grandfather or something with a name? And that was odd because she's my massage therapist. And she's like, well, I don't know, but I do have a, uh, you know, my grandfather's name was that. And so that's how I started practicing with her. I, w I had to kind of just tell her, okay, look, <laughs> I'm, you know, doing these meditation classes and I keep getting these messages. And when you're touching me and stuff like this, you know, energy is just saying this name and I needed to know if it had anything to do with you if I needed to get this message to you and she was just in disbelief and she was like oh my gosh and look right now my thighs are lighting up see that's what I'm talking about when I say something and it's yeah it was it was crazy so she gave me the courage to start practicing with her and then she would send her sisters and stuff my number and they would call me and I was able to know things that I wouldn't know and so that's why it's very, um, it's hard to put yourself out there because I'm just, I mean, putting names down things that I don't know where the heck this is coming from. It's just a gut feeling. It's things I'm seeing, hearing, and I'm just like, is this my stuff? Like, is this coming from my head or is this being given to me? So it took me a long time to go public with it to where I felt confident to say, okay, I will read for you. And a lot of my friends were like, oh, you can read for me. And I'm like, mm -mm, no, I would not read for my friends because I was scared that they would say, you already knew that. And then that would just shut my whole, um, you know, thing down. I would be nervous and I probably wouldn't have picked it back up. So I recently just read yesterday for one of my best friends for the first time. And I've known her for like 10 years. So I like to um, read for strangers <laughs> before I do my friends, but I'm getting better at it. So um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of do a different video that doesn't include me working out. Sorry about all the um, sparkly stuff. Plus part two, I need to do about my eyebrows. They're looking pretty uh, dark, but that's because I just got them touched up yesterday. And she was amazing. Like I went in and we ended up like she's crying. We're talking and her mom came through. It was just a really beautiful thing. But anyway, um, that's kind of what a reading looks like with me. I do all the front work. I give you a call. We talk about the stuff that came through. Then we match it. We put the puzzle together. And then there's questions that are asked. And then that's about it. But usually everybody, 100% of the time, which I can um, 
securely say now or, you know, positively that um, people, you know, leave feeling like a sense of relief and they can start their healing journey and then they start seeing signs and then they're actually starting to see that they can, you know, communicate with loved ones. So everybody has the gift. It's just a muscle that you have to work if you want to. And it's just really awesome. So I'm here to help you because I was in that uh, spot one time where I was just, um, you know, we lose people. That's what happens. And it can really put us down. And so I just want to help lift people back up to live the best life that they can while they're still here um, before they reunite with their families. And so, again, um, let me know if you have any questions. I've enjoyed doing this one. As you can tell, I could talk about this all day. Uh, I saw a meme this morning that said, what's one thing that you could talk about without any kind of notes or hesitation for like 30 minutes? So this is definitely one. Doing readings, healing when people have passed. It's just something I'm super passionate about. And um, it just really strikes me. I'm super empathic. So um, I take on people's feelings and just... Uh, it's, it's kind of a lot. So I know that other people, there's a lot going on in the world right now that we may need to talk. Like, you know, there's there's some a lot of heaviness going on so maybe we should just start like a little group or something where we can talk and kind of you know empaths unite or something like that but i'd be happy to talk and answer any questions but you guys have a wonderful day i'm gonna finish this and then i'm gonna work out and do this reading so have a good one